In this exciting tutorial, we're going to use the JavaScript Gamepad API to build a simple controller tester. Unlike the full video linked in the description, we're just going to focus on displaying the controller and showing which buttons are being pressed. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. For this project, I have VS Code open on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have Chrome with our final solution, where we'll be able to press buttons on our controller and even move our sticks. And if you take a look at our trigger, which is pressure sensitive, as I lightly press it, it's kind of dark. And as I continue to press it, it gets brighter. We'll create a couple of files for this project. We're going to create an index.js and we're also going to create an index.html. Inside the HTML, we can create the boilerplate HTML by pressing exclamation and then tab. For the title, I'm just going to call it Gamepad Tester. In order to build out this controller, we're going to be using an SVG image, and I'll be providing that link in the description. This is the link over here, and all I'm going to do is click on the raw button. I'm going to select everything, copy it, and I will paste it inside of the body of the HTML. To run our code, we're going to be using a VS Code extension called Live Server. So click on the extensions and then search for Live Server. Once you find Live Server, go ahead and install it. They can go back to your project, right click on your index.html and say open with live server. You may notice that we have a PlayStation controller over here. However, this project will work for Xbox, PlayStation, Switch Pro, and other generic controllers as most of the buttons are the same but may be in a different spot. Let's go ahead and just explore the SVG image real quick. The SVG image basically is a drawing of a controller. The neat thing is that it's just like HTML and has elements and those elements can be tied back to various visual things on the screen. For example, let's scroll down and we're going to find some of these rectangles that we have over here. And if we just grab one of these random rectangles, we're going to change the color from black to the color blue. And you'll notice the color change on the controller. Essentially, we're going to be using the gamepad api to find the buttons on the controller and then change their color as you press the buttons on the controller we'll just add a little tiny bit of styling to our html before we move to the javascript inside our head tag we're going to go ahead and add a style tag and inside there we're just going to take the body and we're going to do a text align of center this will keep the controller in the center when we resize the window Let's go ahead and link our JavaScript file. We're going to add a script tag. We're going to have an SRC of index.js. We're also going to apply the defer attribute, which will make the JavaScript execute after all the HTML has loaded. Let's jump into our index.js. We're just going to confirm that everything is working as expected. We're just going to write hi over here. And then we'll go to our Chrome. We'll go to inspect, click on console and double check that it says hi. Let's go ahead and implement those two event listeners. So we're going to create one on a window and we're going to look for the gamepad connected. And from that, we're going to have an arrow function that takes in an event. From that event, we can get the gamepad. So we can go event.gamepad. And then let's go ahead and console.log this to see what's on our gamepad object. With your gamepad connected, press any button on your controller. You're going to see that we're going to console log the gamepad. From the gamepad, we get access to all the buttons on the controller, which is an array. And for each button, we know if it's pressed, touched, or what the value is, which is between 0 and 1. We also get the axes, and there's four of these because two are for one stick and two are for the other stick. The other interesting information is we get an ID, which is the name of the controller. We also get an index value for which controller this is if you have multiple connected and for some controllers you may get a vibration actuator which allows you to rumble the controller next we're going to go ahead and add a variable at the top of our file called controller index and we're going to default the value to null inside of our connected events we're going to take that controller index and assign it to the gamepad.index We'll then implement the disconnect. We can go ahead and copy our current event. And all we have to do is rename a portion of it. So it says gamepad disconnected. And then when we disconnect, we don't need to get the gamepad. All we have to do is set the controller index to null. Let's test that these events are firing correctly. We'll just do a console.log 
connected and we'll just copy that and then down over here we'll put disconnected we'll hit a button on our controller and we'll see connected now if you disconnect your controller from bluetooth or unplug the wire you should see it say disconnected the gamepad api doesn't have any events to tell you when a button is being pressed instead you can ask for the controller state at any time to figure out which button's been pressed and the best way to do this in a game is with a game loop we'll create a game loop and i'll explain exactly what the game loop is doing so we'll define a function called game loop and inside there i'm just going to put a console.log of game loop then we'll go ahead and call the game loop function and if we look at the console we'll see that it's only been called one time and then in order to start our game loop calling itself over and over we're going to use request animation frame which is a built-in function that will call a specified method when it's ready to draw the next screen so we're going to give it a method and we're going to give it a game loop save it and you'll see that the game loop is being called over and over we'll start by removing our console log and then we're going to do an if statement to check if our controller index does not equal to null if it's not equal to null we're going to go ahead and get the game pads we'll define a game pad and we're going to get our game pad from the navigator get game pads and we're going to pass in the controller index We'll then go ahead and create a function called handle buttons, which is going to take in the gamepad dot buttons array. We'll define the handle buttons above passing in the buttons array. And then inside there, we're just going to do a simple for loop. So we're going to do let i is equal to zero while i is less than our buttons dot length and then i plus plus. We'll define a variable for our button that we'll retrieve from the array. Next, we're going to go ahead and get our button element. They're all named the same with the exception of the number at the end. They're all going to be controller-b with a number. We'll create a new variable called button element, and we're going to use document.getElementById by id and we'll use string interpolation and we're going to pass in controller dash b and then the variable thing is the number and we'll pass in i if you want to confirm that you're in a good state what you can do is just console.log your values and hit a button on your controller you'll see a lot of values being printed out over here some are going to say null because there are buttons that don't exist on the controller most of the time you should see gamepad path or anything else that looks like svg or html We'll create another constant called selected button class. This is the CSS class that we're going to be applying to the buttons when they are being pressed. We'll take this string that we created over here and we're quickly going to go to our index.html. We're going to go to our styles. Make sure to put a dot in front of that when you paste it. And we're going to set a fill color. Choose any color that you like. Back inside our index.js, we're going to go ahead and add an if statement that checks if our button element exists. Then we're going to do another if statement inside there if the button.value is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, we're going to take our button element class list and we're going to call add passing in the selected button class that we created. Otherwise, in the else statement, we can just copy that. And instead of add, we can change that to remove. Let's go ahead and test this out. As you can see, I can push buttons and they are changing color on screen. Even the sticks change color. Let's go ahead and implement pressure sensitive buttons. So our triggers are pressure sensitive. When you push them lightly, I want it to be a light color. And the more I press it, the brighter it goes. Inside of our if statement over here, we're going to take our button element and we're going to use a style and we're going to call filter. The filter that we're going to apply is called contrast and contrast inside these parentheses over here, we're going to put a value and we're going to use string interpolation again. We're going to use a button dot value and we're going to times it by 150 and then inside the string over here, I need to put a percent and then we're going to copy that line and inside the else statement, we're going to remove the string interpolation and just change that to 100. Let's go ahead and test it out by lightly pressing the trigger. And you can see when I lightly press it, it's a lighter color. And the more I press it, the darker that it gets. And this works for both triggers. Well, lastly, we're going to go ahead and handle moving the sticks in the game loop. We're going to call a new method that we haven't created called handle sticks. And handle sticks is going to take in the gamepad.axes. We'll define the handle sticks above our game loop and it'll take in the axes. Inside this method, we're going to be updating the left and the right stick. In order to do that, we're going to make a call to the same method that we're going to create called update stick. Update stick will have the following 
structure. It's going to take in an ID to the stick. So I know that the first stick is B10. So this over here is B10 and this one is going to be B11. And then the two other values that we're going to take in are the axes value for zero, which is going to be our left and right for the left stick. And then axes value one, which is going to be our up and down. Then all we have to do is duplicate that line call it for B11, then our left and right over here is going to be two, and our up and down is going to be three. And then let's go ahead and implement update stick. And as we mentioned, it takes in the element ID, the left and right axis, and the up and down axis. We're gonna start by defining a multiplier. And this value is going to be used when we're moving the stick and we're going to use 25. Then we're going to go ahead and define our stick left and right movement. And we're going to take that left right axis and we're going to times it by our multiplier of 25. And we'll do the same thing for our stick up down, which is equal to our up down axis times the multiplier. Then we're going to go ahead and find our stick. We're going to use document dot get element by ID and we're going to pass in the element ID that we passed into this function. The next thing we need to get is the X and Y position of our stick. So we need to know the starting point of the stick for when we move it. In order to figure that value out, I've hard coded them into the image using data attributes. So we have an original X and original Y position, which mimic the X and Y positions of the stick, which will change over time. But this will always tell me where the center is. We'll get our X position first. We're going to convert that to a number and we're going to use stick dot data set dot original x position and we'll do the same thing for the y position so we can just rename anywhere that it says x to y and then all we have to do is take our stick call set attribute and we're going to be setting our cx which is the x position and we're going to take x plus the stick left to right and we'll do the same thing for the y so i'll just copy that change this to y change that to y and we have to do stick up down let's test this out we're able to move the left stick the right stick we can push them in and move them at the same time and we can still press the other buttons i really hope that you enjoyed this fun tutorial and if you did please smash that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell